Good morning. Uh, thank you very much. I'm very uh, grateful for the opportunity that was given by the organizers of this session to present with this video the work of the Joint Research Center of almost a decade um, on the so-called INCA project. INCA stands for uh, Integrated Natural Capital Accounting. Um, I wish to say that I really regret of not being there in presence with you. Uh, it is due to a loss in my family on Tuesday when I was supposed to leave. And, um, well, regretfully, I will not uh, uh, participate in all the interaction and exchanges during the session and during the conference in general. I will try because I will not be able to be in the panel session also to address a couple of issues uh, uh, from the panel discussions. So bear with me if there are a couple of more minutes in this presentation. Um, first, I'd like to stress that uh, the Inca project has benefited very much of a period of uh, very intense discussions and uh, debates uh, among the not only the research co community but also statisticians uh, international organizations of course <laughs> behind uh, the uh, CIA ecosystem accounting uh, module um, some of my colleagues well well before i have uh, joined uh, uh, as team leader the joint research center uh, i've also contributed to um to the uh, working papers and guidelines uh, that were uh, prepared for the CIA uh, EA handbook. Um, but also, of course, we benefited from uh, these discussions to focus and scope uh, and develop the approach for uh, uh, specifically flow accounts. So the focus of the INCA is on ecosystem services, but both in physical and monetary terms. It's basically an operational procedures aligned with the CIA uh, concepts uh, and the framework to develop values that then can be uh, entered into statistics uh, as supply and use tables. It's not only a research project. INCA was a collaboration between the Joint Research Center, the European Statistical Office, Eurostat, but also um, the um, Directorate General for Environment and for Research and Innovation of the European Commission, as well as the Envi European Environment Agency. Uh, the idea was not only to have a methodological development, but also to make accessible in open uh, access um, all the data that were developed through the system, uh, through the project, uh, all the um, ecosystem services, both in tabular and in maps, in tabular forms and, and in explicit, um, especially explicit data, sorry. Um, well, the project, of course, started off with a methodological approach. The idea behind this uh, first technical report in 2017 was to create the relationships, which are many to many, between ecosystem types, ecosystem services, and also the economic sectors. Then later on, we, we could dive in into specific uh, ecosystem services. We started with crop pollination and nature-based recreation. There we could test and uh, use the uh, approach of Inca that looks at both the ecological side, uh, side, starting from biophysical modeling. So all the data and indicators are produced through uh, modeling, ecological models, and combined with socioeconomic uh, data and indicators. This allows then to come up with values to be entered into supply and use tables. But the approach, I'd like to stress this, as a more uh, interesting component that allows also to look at and identify the vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities of ecosystem, meaning that this combination of ecological supply and socioeconomic needs can lead to, of course, a match if the needs do not exceed the supply, but can also lead 
to a mismatch. And this is the case, for example, of an, an AMET demand that can be uh, due to a degraded ecosystem or overuse on a certain areas. And this is particularly interesting if you look not only at table era data, but more importantly at uh, uh, the um, spatially explicit data, because here you have the case of soil retention with a 100 per 100 meter grid. So these maps allow us to also assess the situation at the local level. And here you can see we also have a map that identifies that there is definitely an unmet demand for this specific service. Um, these signals also points also at, uh, in a certain way at the issue of sustainability that was developed a bit further uh, in the second uh, Inca report uh, that looked at sustainability threshold, but also uh, introduced uh, new ecosystem services, crop and timber provision, carbon sequestration and flood control. The third report um, added, well, basically made a summary of all the previous work, but then uh, looked in addition to uh, habitat and species maintenance, soil retention and water purification. Here also there has been a little bit of uh, reflection and uh, the methodology incorporated the concept of the dis distinction between intermediate service and final services because crop provision incorporates also uh, the contribution of many other ecosystem services such as pollination or soil retention water supply etc but these of course um, can also be disentangled using the methodology that was highlighted uh, so using biophysical modeling, but I will come back to this. Um, in Basically, with these three reports, based on this uh, scientific work, uh, thorough work, with Eurostat, Eurostat developed um, a report that is more uh, glossy, but also more uh, synthetic and less technical. Uh, and it's the first attempt uh, to combine, um, let's say, the ecosystem accounts, uh, ecosystem services accounts for the various ecosystems for the whole EU, both in physical, but also aggregated uh, in monetary terms. And this uh, work backed the, the preparation of a new uh, amendment of an existing regulation. The existing regulation, um, is dates back uh, in 2011. So in 2022, basically, uh, the, this regulation introducing general, in general uh, environmental and economic accounts introduces for the first time the ecosystem services accounts. There are seven different ecosystems that are mandatory, of course many others can be provided and it means that as of next year member states we will have to will have to start to produce their own uh, ecosystem accounts and um, so these are the data the dates uh, sorry i forgot as you see this is the amended regulation of 2022 but apart from the regulation the idea of eurostat was to provide uh, tools for member states and uh, and entrusted um, or awarded um, a contract to a consortium to develop inca tools to be used uh, by member states so these uh, contract was awarded to a consortium led by Vito that developed plugins, which are now tested uh, by member states. It's plugins for QGIS, and they provide both uh, data in tabular and in spatially explicit form. So basically, um, this is work in progress. So perhaps uh, in a few months, you, you can have a final product that is, uh, you can able you will be able to test for the time so you you can stay tuned with our website um i'd like now to move on to the uh, focus of this session that is this idea of using uh, biophysical models to develop data and here you can see for soil retention we have uh, for example 
um, um, uh, the use of a variety of data, mainly Korean land cover, which is a specific EU data set, but also Copernicus that uh, virtually covers the whole world. Uh, here we combine Copernicus uh, product called C cover. It's about the fraction of vegetation cover. And at the same time, this is combined with the density of vegeta vegetation. And you can see that here, um, the, this combination leads to a so-called C factor. And the smaller the C factor is, as you can see, this arrow show points at forests, which are the most dense. Uh, then these indicate that there is a higher potential for is, this ecosystem to provide soil retention. Of course, uh, conversely, we have burnt areas that are very, very uh, bad in providing soil retention. <laughs> um, then we move on to another example, which is taken from urban um, ecosystem accounts. These are satellite accounts. And we developed two ecosystem services, air filtration, but here I want to talk about local climate regulation, which is basically um, regulating, is the ability of regulating ambient atmospheric uh, condition in urban areas through, through the presence of vegetation. And this has an impact on the condition, living condition of people and also in supporting the economic sector. Um, here also we have a combination of data which are from in situ monitoring to data from Landsat, Copernicus, even MODIS, which is a NASA, uh, NASA um, data set. Um, and it, these accounts are only produced for uh, city, towns and suburbs. And um, there is a direct correlation, of course, here it's the city of uh, Berlin. In the, on the right side, we see that uh, the reds, red the dots basically uh, point at the uh, absence of, uh, um, of the service. And uh, it's clearly correlated with the settlement and the sealed uh, land. So on the contrary, uh, on the right, for example, and the left, we we see there are forests and urban and, uh, and green areas that provide this uh, type of uh, uh, of service. So finally, I would like to say a couple of words. Allow me to go a bit beyond. So it's the fact that we have been using uh, the C approach also to uh, develop ecosystem condition accounts. These are developed at country level with specially explicit data for each ecosystem. So each ecosystem has a different approach, let's say. Um, you can have a look at the report, but basically uh, there are uh, more and more, uh, there is more and more potential to use the Inca approach, let's say, for supporting also um, yeah, international processes such as the monitoring framework of the global biodiversity framework with uh, the different goals and targets which look at the extent, ecosystem services, as well as the condition. Here we have an example taken by forestry. When you have the time, you can have a look at the, at the paper in nature. Uh, of course, just to finish, we still have challenges to deal with. Uh, of course, that availability and consistency, both consistency, both spatial and temporal, still remain a challenge and, of, of course, uh, constrain also the models, as well as the timely validation to be able to support the policy, um, to, to, to have the policy support on a timely basis. But, of course, we have opportunities. So the implementation of this amended regulation, which integrates mandatory ecosystem services accounts at the EU level is a great opportunity to have practitioners, statisticians, etc., statistical offices working on these uh, accounts and providing, pro producing new data, new accounts. And uh, also with the, it's also an opportunity that we have a, a, a EU uh, approach that will enable the comparability of models and data. I can just finish off by saying we can learn 
uh, lessons from the Inca experiences, experience also in support to support uh, the global processes. As I mentioned, both the global biodiversity framework, but also the EBES global ecosystem assessment. Here, I would like to say the Joint Research Center will also have a, um, a, a role in providing the Europe's regional ecosystem assessment for EBES. And uh, of course, we will aim at uh, using a consistent approach also in that context. And with this, I would like to thank you and sorry for um, you're being a bit uh, too long and thank you for your patience. Especially, I would like to wish a very fruitful uh, workshop and discussions and hope I will have another opportunity another time to meet you personally. Thank you very much.